The Little Mermaid This story is rated yellow. At last, the youngest sister reached her fifteenth year. Well, now you are grown up, said the old dowager, her grandmother. Come and let me adorn you like your sisters. And she placed in her hair a wreath of white lilies, of which the leaf was half a pearl, and the old lady ordered eight great oysters to attach themselves to the tail of the princess to show her high rank. But they hurt me so, said the little mermaid. Pride must suffer pain, replied the old lady. Oh, how gladly she would have shaken off all the grandeur and laid aside the heavy wreath. The red flowers in her own garden would have suited her much better. But she could not change, so she said farewell and rose as lightly as a bubble to the surface of the water. The sun had just set when she raised her head above the waves. The clouds were tinted with crimson and gold, and through the glimmering twilight beamed the evening star in all its beauty. The sea was calm and the air mild and fresh. A large ship with three masts laid becalmed on the water. Only one sail was set, for not a breeze stirred, and the sailors lay idle on a deck or amidst the rigging. There was music and singing on board, and as darkness fell, a hundred colored lanterns were lighted. The little mermaid swam close to the cabin windows. Now and then, as the waves lifted her up, she could look in through the glass window panes and see a number of gaily dressed people. Among them, the most beautiful of all, was a young prince with large black eyes. He was sixteen years of age, and his birthday was being celebrated with great display. The sailors were dancing on deck, and when the prince came out of the cabin, more than a hundred rockets rose in the air, making it as bright as day. The little mermaid was so startled that she dived under water, and when she resurfaced, it looked as if all the stars of heaven were falling around here. She had never seen such fireworks before. Great guns spurted about, splendid fireflies flew into the blue air, and everything was reflected in the clear, calm sea beneath. The ship itself was so brightly illuminated that all the people, and even the smallest rope, could be distinctly seen. How handsome the young prince looked, as he pressed the hands of all his guests and smiled at them, while the music resounded through the clear night air. It was very late, yet the little mermaid could not take her eyes from the ship or from the beautiful prince. The colored lanterns had been extinguished, no more rockets rose in the air, and the cannon had ceased firing. The sea became restless, and the moaning, grumbling sound could be heard beneath the waves. Still, the little mermaid remained by the cabin window, rocking up and down on the water so that she could look within. After a while, the sails were quickly set, and the ship went on her way. But soon, the waves rose higher, heavy clouds darkened the sky, and lightning appeared in the distance. A dreadful storm was approaching. Once more, the sails were furled, and the great ship pursued her flying course over the raging sea. The waves rose mountain high, but the ship dived like a swan between them, then rose again on their lofty, foaming crests. At length, the ship groaned and creaked. The thick planks gave way under the lashing of the sea, and the waves broke over the deck. The mainmast snapped asunder like a reed, and the ship lay over her side. The water rushed in. The little mermaid now perceived that the crew were in danger. Even she was obliged to be careful, to avoid the beams and planks of the wreck that lay scattered on the water. For one moment, it was so dark that she could not see a single object. But when a flash of lightning came... It revealed the whole scene. She could see everyone who had been on board, except the prince, who had sunk into the deep waves. At first she was glad, for she thought he would now be with her, but then she remembered that human beings could not live in the water, so that when he got down to her father's palace, he would certainly be quite dead. No, he must not die! Diving deep under the dark waters, rising and falling with the waves, she at length managed to reach the young prince, who was fast losing the power to swim in that stormy sea. His limbs were failing him, his beautiful eyes were closed, and he would have died had not the little mermaid come to his assistance. She held his head above the water and let the waves carry them where they would.